Enter China. The tragic death of a young woman caused an architectural revolution in China. These monuments carry with them the stories of legendary people and social traditions. Discover China tells the tragic tale behind the memorial arches. On a late night in May, 1783, a woman in Jiangxi province commits suicide. Her death soon jolted the nation, and news of her death reached Emperor Qianlong himself. a memorial arch be built to commemorate this woman. Ultimately, this woman's suicide brought glory and pride to her entire village. Memorial arches are edifices designed to commemorate people, events, and special occasions. Experts believe these arches were originally called hungmen, or gates of value. Records of these monuments were found in the Book of Songs during the spring and autumn period in the 6th century AD. According to the book, the arches served as monuments similar to such monuments in the Western world. society, memorial arches were used to honor meritorious achievements, benevolent administrations, filial piety, and many other aspects of life. Initially, they were of a ritualistic nature only. Originating in the Han Dynasty and maturing during the Tang and Song Dynasties, the arches peaked during the Ming and Qing Dynasties. Among ancient Chinese, they were considered the ultimate honor. Originally, these archways served as territorial border markings. As Chinese society evolved, this practical function of the memorial arches was abandoned, and they soon turned from simple border posts into magnificent monuments often associated with extraordinary events or people. In May 1783, Wang Chaoshan, a farmer in Jiangxi province, southern China, returned home to find his wife in tears. Wang quickly asked his wife why she was crying. Sobbing, his wife told the reason for her tears. Later that night, she committed suicide, hanging herself. Wang reported his wife's death to the authorities. Local officials began investigating, reporting their findings to their superiors. Surprisingly, the story of the woman's death reached Emperor Qianlong himself. Upon hearing the reports, he ordered a memorial arch to be built to honor this woman. His order caused quite a commotion in the area.
constructing a memorial arch was extremely complicated. The person or the deeds that were commemorated had to be authentic. Local officials had to report to their superiors and ultimately to the emperor. Construction was then approved by the emperor himself. Additionally, the family had to be financially secure. Why did Emperor Qianlong order to commemorate this woman? Was her family famous? Did local officials exaggerate to earn rewards? According to historical records, the woman was married to a farmer. Her maiden name remains unknown. Since marrying Wong at the age of 16, she spent her days on the farm. In the Qing Dynasty, punishments were cruel. If an official lied to the emperor, his entire family would be sentenced to death. This acted as an efficient deterrent against those who sought rewards on false pretenses. Records, the woman took her own life because another man touched her hand while she was working on the farm. Who touched the woman's hand and why was this simple touch so horrible to drive her to suicide? No detailed accounts exist about the man who touched her and the mystery of her suicide remains unsolved to this day. China's ancient social system was exacting. Physical contact between a man and a woman outside of marriage was considered extremely inappropriate. Wives were duty-bound to make their husbands the center of their lives, keeping their distance from other men. Had they not done so, they would be condemned by their families and society at large. This act went against the very fabric of social morality in those days. Less than informed onlookers who would see her hand touched by another man would regard this woman's behavior as inappropriate. The woman had no way to explain what happened to her husband. She was angry, ashamed, and violated. code served to discipline women's behavior. After they married, they had to obey their husbands and be loyal to both their parents. Women who broke these rules would be severely punished. In ancient China, women were expected to remain loyal even after their husband's death. Many women raised children and supported theirs and their husband's parents by themselves. This woman's death was in line 
with the moral codes of those days. The emperor wished to encourage other women to follow these moral codes so that the man's status in the family unit could be raised further. The officials in Jiangxi province considered the woman to be chaste, her deed respectable. They reported the matter to their superiors, reaching the imperial court and eventually to Emperor Qianlong. Soon work on the arch began, though Emperor Qianlong's true motives remain a mystery. century during the Ming Dynasty, construction of memorial arches was controlled by emperors. Since the 18th century during the Qing Dynasty, memorial arches were more often used to commemorate chaste women. This was an unusual day for Emperor Qianlong. A memorandum to the throne caught his attention. This message posed great influence on Chinese women. This memorandum was presented to the emperor by officials of the Ministry of Rights. During the Qing Dynasty, the Ministry of Rights took charge of the important rites such as sacrifices to the heavens and ancestors. The content of this memorandum to the throne was about this woman. Emperor Qianlong was shocked and moved by her loyalty to her husband, thus ordered the people to build a memorial arch for her. were ancient symbols of glory and honor. After the 14th century, they became associated with emperors, adding to their luster. the farmer's wife's hand. No records can account for his abhorrent behavior. What can be accounted for is that this man's deeds led to the death of a woman and the tragedy of an entire family. Southeastern China, dozens of memorial arches dot the land. More than half of them are dedicated for chaste women. In the 15th century, 
Huizhou merchants became key players in China's business world, their wives serving as the pillars that supported them. Shortly after getting married, these men would leave on business, leaving their wives and families behind. Facing years of loneliness, these women's beauty had faded. To commemorate their sacrifice, numerous memorial arches were erected. For some women whose husbands were unsuccessful, no monuments were built. All of these arches bear the sorrow of ancient Chinese women. Among the Huizhou arches is Wu Shi Memorial Arch. Built in 1767, it was dedicated to a woman surnamed Wu. She married Bao Wen Yuan, a widower, at 22, only to be widowed at 29. Over the next 30 years, she raised her husband and his former wife's children and built tombs for the Bao family's nine generations. Moved by her honorable deeds, the Bao family built an arch in her memory. An order from the emperor, ancient China's highest authority, was not to be challenged. If a family was allowed to have a memorial arch, it meant that this family, or even the entire region, was recognized by the imperial court, and that their model conduct was of a higher standard than the rest. This treatment helped the emperor consolidate his power, and the main reason why emperors approved the construction of memorial arches. However, contrary to their concept, these arches negatively influence society. After losing their husbands, many women chose to kill or maim themselves to display their loyalty, falsely earning them these once honorable structures. Each memorial arch told the glory of a family bitter story of a woman. Though seemingly identical, these memorial arches come in different shapes and sizes. They are made with various materials, such as wood or stone. Some are covered with a colorful glaze and many other diverse materials.
purposes of their construction, the arches fell into four main categories, honoring meritorious achievements, celebrating first place winners in imperial exams, sanctifying martyrs, and commemorating chaste women. These arches were influential even upon later generations. In ancient times, strict regulations concerning the size of memorial arches were set in place. In different places, sizes differed greatly. government-funded. More often than not, funds required to cover construction costs were taken from the local authorities and even the families themselves. In Shandong, several families became bankrupt because of the extreme costs. dedicated to this woman was funded by the imperial court itself. It was an extraordinary honor for her family, an honor that has been passed down for generations. present ancient China's exquisite construction skills. Though a distant story from the past, this woman's loyal deed remains commendable to many people to this very day. Traditional notions of chastity were carved onto the arch. Looking at these marvelous arches, people today are examined by them and their values. When modern society looks upon these arches, how does it compare to the society of old? <laughs>